everyone. Uh, welcome to a session about visualization or all kinds of interfaces that are built on top of Wikimedia projects. Um, we have two present, well, in fact, three, two, uh, five presentations. Uh, one by Sean and Levinow. Sean the Burn and Levinow. Very well. Yes. The co founders of Histopedia, and Histopedia is a tool that creates uh, timelines of everything in the world, I would say, yeah. uh, on top of Wikidata. And yeah. you are going to demonstrate the tool and then talk a bit about it. Yeah. Uh, and then afterwards we, we will have the story of uh, Hai Kran, who combines two tools that he has created. Okay, so we um, So yeah, I'm Sean McBain, this is Navino Evans, and we're here to talk about Histopedia. As I said, uh, creating a timeline of everything in history. Um, the idea is to reuse all of the data that's already available and to stay synchronized with new data as it's added to Wikipedia or to Wikidata. And our vision eventually is to try and have everything from the Big Bang right up to the present day. Um, and to allow searching and filters so that people can compare and analyze and explore history in a, in a new way. So we're going to start with a demo of Histopedia and then we're going to show you how we're using Wikidata to, um, to help this project and why it's become so important to our project. Um, yeah, we'll start with a blank time there. Um, so, uh, so far we've imported about one and a half million events from Wikipedia articles. And we'll just start by showing you how that works. Um, in its simplest form, we can just add any Wikipedia article onto the timeline. So we'll start with Vincent van Gogh. And we can see him pinned to the dates he was born. And we'll also add in Rembrandt and, yeah, uh, Rembrandt and Raphael. So we'll just add a few different painters. You notice they just come on pinned to exactly where they should be and you can kind of just visualize their lifetimes. Um, so one of the new features that we've just built is a timeline directory which means instead of just adding single events, we can add entire timelines. So we're going to sort of build on what we've got here and add in paintings by Vincent van Gogh. So yeah, the results at the top here, they're, they're the timelines, and these ones underneath are the actual individual events. So we're just going to do paintings by van Gogh. And we're going to merge that on so that we're combining the timeline with the events we already have. And then as we zoom into this area, we can see a sort of visual interpretation of the Wikipedia articles all laid out to the dates that they were created. And we can zoom back out and we'll just do the same for Rembrandt and Raphael. And again we merge them in and we'll do the same. and then we can zoom into either of these areas. And what happens is as we zoom in, less important events appear to fill in the space created. And we can zoom in there to see the paintings by Rembrandt. This is one of the really nice things about Histopedia is how we can, um, we can merge individual events and timelines together to make our own sort of custom timeline, our own little exploration of history. Um, and yeah, you can do this with with any of the timelines. We actually have about 340,000 timelines, all of which have been imported from Wikipedia categories. And some of them aren't very good uh, because of the Wikipedia structure. So there's some with very few events in there because of the category structure. They've not all come out brilliantly, but there are thousands and thousands of them that work very, very well. Um, the one we've shown you here is an example of works by a famous person. So these are paintings by famous artists. That also works for, it could be from sculptors to films directed or albums by a musician. Sort of goes on and on. Another couple of areas that we can make nice timelines for. Uh, military history is covered very well. So battles of World War I. It comes up, it's quite a nice timeline. And then again we can zoom in to see a sort of a day by day history. Um, and people work extremely well. Um, so let's add in 5th uh, century BC philosophers. These people timelines work really well when you combine them with an occupation and a date range. 
So sort of like this one or 17th century English poets, all of those work very well. And there we have, yeah, the most important philosophers from the 5th century BC. Um, so as I mentioned, everything's linked to a Wikipedia article. When you double click on an event, we open the reading window where you can see a you can see the Wikipedia article and read that. We have some other related content such as books and TV and film and YouTube videos. What people are saying on, about Confucius on Twitter at the moment. <laughs> and also, yeah, uh, a Twitter stream as well. Um, okay, so let's zoom in and just have a quick look at one of the actual events in a bit more detail. <coughs> so, so uh, there's basically three parts to each event, uh, with the title, which matches exactly to the Wikipedia article title, the picture, which we get from Wikipedia article or from Wikidata, and of course the dates, possibly the most important thing for us. And the dates now we're getting nearly all of them from Wikidata items. And this is really important for our project because of the precision that Wikidata gives us with the dates. When we were taking dates only from Wikipedia, we're pretty much limited to getting only year precision on each date, but with Wikidata we can very easily get right down to the very day that the event took place. However, the dates are actually not the most interesting or important thing about Wikidata for our project. What really gets us excited is the ability to query or to ask questions of Wikidata. And now we're going to talk a little bit about how we use Wikidata for creating timelines using queries. I think I'll switch over. What is I'll awkwardly switch and I'll let Navino take over. Where's the best place to clip it? Is it about there? Yeah, just clip it somewhere. Clip it on the, about there? Itself. Okay, let's get I'll take that off. Is it? Oh, I'm going to take that off. It's completely useless anyway. Don't know where that's gone. Okay. So, yeah, this is by far the bit that we always get the most excited about because it's where we get to talk about the power of Wikidata queries and what that does for a third-party project that is integrated with, with, with Wikidata. So, I mean, the earlier talks might have mentioned that there isn't actually an official Wikidata tool yet, but we are using what's already available. Great tool by Magnus Manx that you might have seen before called Auto... Well, not Autolist, the Wikidata query tool. So we're just going to sort of... Um, before we show you how it works, I just want to sort of explain a bit about why it's so important. Um, so we, we've seen all these um, timelines we've got from Wikipedia categories, and it's fantastic. We've got a lot of them. Um, but there's huge limitations because there's no way that you can ever get as specific as you sometimes need to be. Um, and Wikidata really it, it has all the answers to this problem. Uh, because of all the amazing amounts of structured data that is there, we are able to ask a question of Wikidata and get a very specific set of results back. Um, so, for example, you know, you might want to be looking at paintings. You might want to find out uh, wh whether it's an oil. You know, we might want to look for oil paintings or paintings that depict a certain thing, like women uh, or buildings or something like that. Uh, you might want to look at paintings that are located in a certain museum um, and. Or you might want to combine all these things together into a single query and find some things that match all of those criteria. So we're just going to run that query now from a bookmark. Should be. Yeah. We love live demos for this reason, so yeah, there'll be a few mistakes and a few problems. Uh, hopefully get to ride. Oh, we've got a connectivity issue. But anyway, just, just while we're trying to sort out the technical glitch that has to happen, obviously, I'm glad we're getting it out of the way nice and early. Um, basically, what, what we're getting at here is that our system has it's increased exponentially in power simply because we match everything that we have in our system to Wikidata. So the fact that all the items in Histopedia match to a Wikidata item means that we can tap into the power of Wikidata without having to write large amounts of, of code ourselves. For example, we didn't have to build the query engine uh, for this. We're just tapping into what's there. So there's our, there's our query uh, results. So this is paint, oil paintings depicting women that are located at the Louvre. And that just kind of blows my mind that you can be that specific. And Sorry to interrupt you. 
as user, you can do that with the tool. Yet, so well, you can. The only problem is, is you have to know the query language. Yeah. But we'll come to something a bit later, which is a little bit of plan for the future yeah. about why, you know, why people shouldn't have to know a query language yeah. to access this. It should be available to everyone, yeah. uh, no matter what, what you know about computers. So at the moment, you because know, you know how to make queries, anything you put into Autolist, if you just put uh, question mark Q equals at, after the URL, then it will run the query on Histopedia. So of course, we're limited to items that we also have dates for. Uh, we can't display things that don't have chronological information, which generally speaking is something that hasn't got a date in Wikidata yet. But it's happening fast. You know, there's so much information and data coming in. So. Um, it's kind of just such an exciting thing for us. We always have to show a couple more. Um, uh, we're in the Netherlands, so we want to show really broad power of queries. You, you don't have to be very specific. You can be incredibly broad. So this is just people from the Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one, just one less broad than just people, which is also a cool one. Uh, but this is OK because it's about the right range. We can display up to about 20,000 events on a timeline at the moment. Uh, but very, hopefully very soon, in a matter of kind of a few months, or probably double or treble that, <laughs> uh, as it normally is with uh, estimations, you'll be able to go up to an infinite number. Uh, uh, yeah? If you're doing 20,000 events on one timeline, um, presumably you have ways of saying which are the important and less important ways of... Doing yeah. Yeah. We, we could explain the actual the reasoning behind it, because obviously importance can be very subjective. So what we're doing at the moment, we've got our very first basic system of ranking, which is all based on uh, how many backlinks come in from other Wikipedia articles. So an event, if you zoom right the way out, you're going to see that the ones that get chosen are the ones that have the most, the most links from other Wikipedia articles at the moment. Uh, but it's only in English Wikipedia right now, which is a big limitation. We want to do that multilingually and make the site multilingual. Yeah. That's a very interesting, I mean, this is something, it's going to be a project in its own right. Uh, that's a really good suggestion. So basically, uh, we, we, we will talk more about, well, in the future talks, we're going to talk loads about rank, because we want to have different ranking systems, you know, by how controversial it is, how many edits are happening to talk pages and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, that's a good point. So uh, just one more uh, query that we'd like to just show. Um, that's, uh, just to show, uh, just to plant a few ideas in your head about what you can do with queries. You can basically do whatever you want in, in, when the data is complete. But just to give you another idea, uh, let's do a location-based one. So this is, now, um, uh, this is now just all items within a three kilometer radius of the Rijksmuseum. Um, and so we kind of get this local history of the Rijksmuseum or wherever you happen to be at the time, you can put in your, just on your tablet, just say, oh, show me my local history and the way it comes. Uh, yeah, which I just, I just find that amazing. Uh, but... That should be thousands and thousands of items. Exactly, which is exactly my next point. Um, now, actually, how many, can you rerun it again a second just to see how many we... Yeah, about 100 of um, many, many thousands. Wikidata does much better already, but already, obviously, Wikidata still has work, a lot of work so to be done. Historic building in Amsterdam has an item now, and that's... Well, over 5,000. Do all of those items have Wikipedia articles? No, but they do have coordinates. We need to, we need to change our system a little bit. Yeah. At the moment, we've got um, mm. an event for an article, yeah. and very soon we're going to change that to be an event for an item, uh, which should give us, yeah, thousands and thousands more items. Mm. Um, Max's tool is brilliant, but it's um, yeah. slow today. Yes, yeah, that's a good point, yeah. yeah. But that, but that, yeah. yeah. And we can do a query to show us the ones without dates and start working. Yeah, and obviously query for just listed buildings and all the rest of it, all the great things you can do. But the minute it's got a date and an item, I mean, we're going to switch to Wikidata items very soon. Uh, so the minute it has a date and an item, we'll probably have it in our system. Um, but yeah, picture obviously quite important too. If you look for the date, because if you have any date into an item, yeah. you have a list of all the relevant plans per type. We deal with, uh, when there's duplicates, when there's loads of different options, we'll probably take the earliest one for a start date and the latest one for, a, you know, the, the earliest it possibly could have been, but th there's lots of work to be done here. We want to indicate that in the UI to show people that there are multiple options and things like that. And we pick certain properties. For, at the moment, the, the major event is when it existed, so when something began to when it ended. But we'll, we'll, we'll answer a couple more of those at the end. Um, 
So just quickly, because we're probably running a bit low on time. I know we've got, we've got five minutes left. Okay, so um, basically, uh, so that's a really cool location, but like you, you touched on there, we, there's a lot of work to be done on the data set. And it, if, if a lot more things had dates in Wikidata, we, we, we would have a lot more. Um, so really, it's just about the community building and developing and, and speeding up the process uh, of, of Wikidata becoming the, the mature project that it, that it can be very soon. Um, and of course, that kind of also links in with institutions deciding, you know, let's, let's think about opening up content and facilitating, you know, import into Wikidata. Um, so, um, I mean, uh, there's a lot of advantages that come with that. You get all of this query power, you know, without having to write your own tool like we do. Which is quite profound. You get to, you know, it's incredible what you can do with that data. You wouldn't be able to do internally without making all this stuff. Um, another point is that you can visualize the data. So you get to visualize it with all of these uh, third party tools like Histopedia, or there's actually there's a, well, there's a talk coming up just after this the, uh, the Sum of All Knowledge Visualizer. And there's no doubt going to be countless more in the future. Your family tree one as well. Mm, which we loved, yeah. We'll hopefully bring in a bit of genealogy before the end. Um, so basically, uh, it, there's a lot of advantage to people giving that. It's not a one-way story. You know, it's really worth putting data into the ecosystem. Um, so what should we do? What should we do next? I think we've just got one more thing. Um, yeah, just yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. This is quite cool because you were saying you shouldn't you shouldn't uh, have to know a query language, or are you saying do you have to know a query language and you shouldn't have to, so we're going to build some tools directly into Histopedia that allow people to generate queries with more natural inputs. It's literally, we haven't, we haven't got it yet, but we've created a kind of a basic prototype, which is just what we're going to have, the kind of options we'll have in the, in the system. Um, yeah. So this is just a query generator for, me, for finding people. So we're going to select females. Uh, we're going to choose an occupation artists and we're also going to say we want all female artists who are also descendants of Alfred the Great <laughs> um, and um, we'll run the query and hopefully Magnus's magic will come through for us once again or maybe not so you've got this mock up in Google Docs yeah. It's literally a Google Docs because yeah. neither of us can code. So basically, this is something we can actually do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and it's the most exciting thing I think I've ever done in Google Docs because it's normally really boring stuff. But it's great. The actual the, 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 the template there it has a link to, uh, to auto lists. So to see the full list of results in, in, in Magnus's tool, has a link to Histopedia. And it's just, yeah, it's just a, a beginning basic concept. But even that is incredibly useful. Okay, so have we got it running? Yeah, there we go. And there we have it. Uh, so these are all of the fem female artist descendants of Alfred the Great. <laughs> so there we go. And I think we're running really low on time. So is there time for any questions? Or I think it's yeah, I think we've got like five, ten minutes. Oh, well, yeah, two questions. That's fine. We can ask, ask others afterwards. Um, yeah. Can this be used to visualize other data, uh, collections from other data sets? And what I'm thinking is all about. In theory, yes, definitely. Um, we're working on sort of one is the data import from Wikipedia and Wikidata, but we're also just trying to build a really good interface for, for exploring time, and then we can start using yeah any any other data source which has got yeah some data which is open we can we can import. Yeah, we're thinking about actually talking to the Europeana guys. I think that might be in the room here somewhere. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> so yeah, that that's going to be a great start, you know. And uh, yeah, the sky's the limit for that. Yeah, for sure. Any other questions? One more? And if, oh, oh, yeah, go for it. Have you thought about uh, um, uh, sort of putting an API around this repeater itself? Absolutely, or? yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, I yeah, yeah. So basically, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's all just on our roadmap of, the, map of things we definitely want to have. We want to have an API for accessing the timelines. All the content is published under an open license, so any timelines that users put together that's just inside here is, is all published uh, under an open license that so can be reused. Uh, yeah. So I see a lot of glamps, including European, European in the past, building quite crappy timelines. And <laughs> rather than doing, spending time on that, curate the data instead. And then this is kind of what we're hoping. We want to become the ultimate timeline interface and then people can just feed their data in, you know. Um, yeah, we've got one more of you. Oh, there's, okay. there's an opportunity here to contact local authorities and say, why we can actually create, you just need to link to it, for the data that's 
from your council website mm. a timeline of you, and it can be embedded on their website, really. You can just click embed and you embed it. So we, we want to use that as an argument for authorities and organizations trying to get their data in, you know, into the central hub, into Wikidata. So it's a really good point. I never thought about the local authorities. It's a perfect example. Yeah. 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 And they've got the knowledge to, to put in there to actually build the content. Yeah, they're the perfect people for the job, in other words. Um, but like, I guess we'd better wrap it up because there's the other, uh, yeah, we've got two more things to get through. Um, but thanks all for listening. And if you want to ask anything more, come and find us. We'll put links to everything that we've done here in the Etherpad. Thank okay, you. thank you very much.